Okay, so now we're here with the first one of the pictures that we're going to take with the Mamiya RB67. As you can see the setup now, I have the two studio strobes, the Mamiya RB67 put on the tripod, I'm doing some B-roll with the Panasonic as usual, and as you can see this is the 90mm we're going to use, and this is the subject, and uh, for you guys now, Normally people used to use either a black or a white background for their studio as such. But I thought, why don't go half and half so that we can actually see the effects that the different backdrops are giving us. So uh, we have this little, what should we call it, this ceramic uh, plate uh, with some lemons and two fairly old bananas. And we're going to use the Shepherd light meter to be able to calculate the f-stop. But what I at least want for this one is I want something like f8, so everything is in focus. So we're gonna begin with utilizing the two speed lights, or other studio strobes, but we have a little bit of a dilemma. As you can see on both of them now, we don't have any type of modifiers on them, and this is gonna give us extremely harsh shadows. But I don't really want it. I want to soft them, softening them up a bit. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any. What should we say? I don't have any uh, soft boxes for this. But I have something else. Uh, so we're going to take a look at that in a minute. So uh, I'll just uh, do a sweep with the little Panasonic, and we'll see what we have here. Actually, so I don't know how much this will be able to see it if I do a little covering like so. Maybe uh, the bad thing is that we have a ceiling light just above this, so it shines a little bit in the waist level viewfinder. So I might be able to have to kill this light. It's basically to get a lot of light for the RB or rather the D7200 to be able to film this. But when I take both of the strobes onto uh, the modeling light, it might be able to show you a little bit more what uh, what's what. But anyway, we'll see how we do. One moment, please. Power on both of the studio strobes. There we go, we have both of them on. Well, uh, here we go. These are two shoot-through umbrellas uh, that came with the flash accessory, or the, the flashes. So, yeah. These work a little bit like soft boxes, that they are opaque, but they still let light through. Uh, excuse me. Okay, so with these uh, both on, you might see that we get a lot softer shadows uh, with the modeling lights. And if you have a look in the waist level viewfinder, we will have to do now some adjustments to the flashes so that we get a <coughs> f-stop on the, let's see what we are aiming for. We're basically aiming for to get these uh, the uh, digital readout on the Shepard to say 16 because that would give us uh, a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second and uh, f8. So we have to modify the light to get to 16. So that's what we're gonna do now and it might take a few tries. Yes, as I thought, we have to move this camera so that we get a little bit as such. So basically what we have to do is take the PC port lead from the camera to the shepherd. Something like this. We get F10 and that would give us F4 which is a little bit too that's a little bit too little, so we have to increase both of these. We need to increase both of the studio strobes, so... We have to see here. Go, we were at one-eighth 
power. So maybe now we're going up a bit. Uh, go. Approximately the same. And make sure that we don't entangle ourselves. And uh, we do another test. 14. We're getting there. F56. Uh, so we just need to add a tad more and we are golden. Let's see again if we are any more lucky. 16 and we're on the money. So F6. So we are achieved. We have achieved what we want. We have F8 at uh, 1 250th of, 50th of a second. So let's just plug this back in. Such. Just put the shepherd down, make sure we're not entangled in anything. Have a look at our composition. I'm using the magnifying loop so that we know that we have this, the right amount of sharpness. Using the, I'm using the little lever on the lens that gives me a preview so I can see how much will be in focus. And I'd say that is what we want. And I'm using mirror up mode, so I'm using two plungers. That one, this one, that will raise the mirror, and this that will actually take the picture. And also I have this little lens shroud on the lens because I know it might be a little bit bounce. Okay, removing the dark slide, putting that out of harm's way. And uh, here we go, first up with the mirror. And uh, after that, it's just the shutter. So one, two, three. There we go. That was the first uh, first picture with this system. So there we go. And uh, let's see what is. And I'll see you in the next one when we're gonna have a different uh, subject to photograph. So see you in a bit. Okay. Okay, so now we're here with the second one we're gonna take, and uh, as always, we're gonna take this. Uh, come on, yeah, here we go. This time in, in uh, this next picture, and we are on frame two. Uh, for your eagle eye viewers, uh, as you can see on the RB now, we're gonna take this uh, horizontal. Uh, on the first one, we actually did it vertical uh, because of. I wanted it like that, uh, but this time we are doing something a little bit more special because we're now using both of these two studio strobes. But as you can see on this one, we have a snoot, and uh, the snoot actually has a honeycomb on the front, and on the other one, we actually have a we actually have the barn doors, but we also have a grid filter on this one. So yeah, we have grids on both of them, so we got a little bit more straight light on it but uh, as you can see on this candelabra you have a little bit a little bit of the reflections in the glass part down here and in general and i want to eliminate that uh, but i still want to use the studio strobe so what are we going to do we're going to try now a thing i haven't done this before uh, but uh, i'm aiming for something like f5.6 and uh, we're going to use this a circle a circular polarizing, excuse me, a circular polarizing filter made by Kenko. Kenko. Uh, and uh, let's see here. Ultraviolet rays, all the way in high school, Yeah, well, okay, let's see here. And it doesn't really say anything about this uh, taking away stops of light, so we're gonna do just the way the shepherd says it, and uh, we're aiming towards a combined f-stop of still, we might take it down to, uh, one, to 125th of a second in order to be able to go down to f5.6 which I think is a good one for this candelabra and we have tried to center it so half is in the black and half uh, is in the white. I might be needing to do a little bit of an adjustment uh, with the camera. Let's see here. There we go. It's a little bit off-center, 
but since we're going to do it as a more of a panoramic, it doesn't really matter. But anyway, we're going to have some dots still because, yeah, we're going to have the two dots as you can see now if I put, uh, if I again, if I turn off the ceiling lights uh, and uh, do some filming in here with the Panasonic, if I do something like this, you might be able to see it. That we have the two dots on the down the, on the blue glass part of the candelabra, uh, but there is a lot of other types of glare and so on that we won't be able to, that we won't have at least. So, yeah, one final check of the focus, and uh, we will. Uh, you know, use a circular polarizer, and we're gonna just use the shepherd to measure the light uh, to make sure that we have about f 5.6. So, uh, one moment, and we'll have a look. <clears throat> and there we have you. Okay, we're going to take it down to 1 125th of a second. So, 10. Okay, uh, apparently we need to increase the power a little bit on both to get to 5.6 or something like that. And let's see, something like that. So, let's see what, what we get. Fifteen, so we got fifteen, so we have uh, almost two F eight once again. So we need to back these up uh, just a little bit in order to get where we want to be. Let's see. Thirteen, and we are on the money. So at uh, measurement thirteen. We get uh, at 100 ISO, since we, this is 10 years old, we need to half uh, the ISO. We get F5.6 at 100 and 1 125th of a second. So this will be our second exposure on this roll. There we go. Put down the F1 and uh, yeah, then it's just one final check. And uh, let's see, come on. Ah. First, raising the mirror. And let's see, three, two, one. There we go. And uh, yeah, that will be all for now, and we'll see you in the next segment. Okay, so this is the third picture that when we are gonna take with the RB67 and uh, let's see where did I put that Panasonic once again let's see here you are uh, turn it maybe this is a little bit of a repeat of the first one uh, of the previous one when we did the candelabra but this time it's a little bit different because this time it's metal we are focusing on uh, we have some candlestick holders here that are all made out of brass uh, some of them are a little bit more polished than others, some have a little bit more patina, some have less. But uh, basically we have some really good contrasty colors here. First of all, the candlesticks are white, so the white side here, let's see how we can get the kind of, what should we say, the contrast between the white background and the white of the candlesticks. And also on the black side, how it changes. So again, we're trying to do half and half. But this time I'm gonna use a, a different type of light modifier because I want to have a warm glow to both all of this. So as you can see, I have them both turn away from me. And that is because I'm gonna use another set of umbrellas, but these are not shoot-through umbrellas. These are actually gold umbrellas, which might be a little bit tacky for some, but uh, I think that with this, we're both going to be able to see on the white background uh, how much of the, the golden color of these actually reflects and also if they can give a warm ambient glow uh, for these uh, 
panel holders. And uh, what should we, I want this one, I want to be able to, this back one and uh, this one, I want to have a little bit of a more shallow, I want a really shallow depth of field of this. So the ma min maximum this can do is 3.8 and I'll see if we can get that close. So maybe we can go down to 1 60th of a second and uh, by doing that we'll see if we can achieve f3.8 to get it as you know shallow depth of field as possible so let's see what we can do shall we come on good so as you might see here i'll just take the plastic cover I try to get them a little bit at a 45 degree angle. So let's see now. We need to do again flash metering with the shepherd, which I have over here. There we go. Need to take the PC port. Like so and about here we want to be 13 and we are a bit off we need to be at about what should we say uh, nine we need to get this down to nine so first we will turn these I think we're gonna try to turn these two down as much as we can as we can and uh, see where that leaves us 14 so we are way off we are at uh, five six so we'll try to decrease the shutter speed to 1 one-sixtieth of a second. And we get 8. And that gives us almost a 2.8 or a little bit. Let's see. So 8. Uh, let's see. Can we go? How should we do it then? Actually, I think actually this will work because if we take it down there to almost f2.8 and this one is uh, 3.8 and calculating for that we are halving the, the ISO performance of the film and so on and I want this to have a little bit of a soft glow to it. Just take a look uh, one more time and see what we get consistent. We get seven. Yeah, seven. So I think this will work because I want this to be a little bit darker and have this a little bit more glow to it. So I think this actually will work. So let's see here, one sixtieth of a second and 3.8. So we'll have a look and see what we get. Turn you off. I have to turn this off uh, between shots because this really burns through the batteries. And this was all, will also be a horizontal picture. So there we go. Let's say this is, uh, yep. Yeah. And uh, as always then, we raise the mirror. And uh, don't really dangle so much. Let's see now, three, two, one. Yeah. Anyway, that's good. That was the third one. Now we are over to the fourth. And I think we will do a little bit of a different thing once again for the next uh, picture, so stay tuned for that one. Okay, so this time, we are, as you can already see, I have actually started a little bit here with uh, two other types of flash uh, modifiers, and this time it's silver umbrellas. And the reason is that I am gonna use with, let's see, where are I? Is it here? 
this time I you can see that I have the camera a little bit more down and it's pointed slightly upwards. That is because uh, the subject uh, now is this statue, which is made of fake marble or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and uh, I want it now as well, if you might be able to see in here, I have it not, it's not a full figure. It's basically from the waist up and I try to get both hands in it. So basically it's knees and up. And it's because I want these two now to have a fairly neutral light. I don't want it to be colored. I want it to be as, you know, more or less white light. So if I need to do anything, I can change the uh, Kelvin or so on the white balance in post. But uh, what it basically is that now we're gonna have this and we still have half and half that we have white and black. This is a vertical one that we're taking. So it's more for portraiture. And I have changed the lens as well on this one. Before we used the 90 millimeter. This is the 150 millimeter F4 soft focus. So this one, I don't have any of the discs in it. So it will have the maximum amount of soft focus effect, but I have put it so that the face of the figurine is in the center uh, or as much in the center as I can get it so that the little puff of hair, 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 hair of, on the top of the figurine's head will be a little bit, hopefully, a little bit soft and as we go down towards the knees it will become more and more soft. So we want to have this as close to F4 as possible so uh, we'll see what the shepherd tells us and uh, we will go from that. So now I'm just gonna have a look at, uh, with you know, have a look with the shepherd and uh, set up the flashes so we get as close to F4 as possible. And I think we're gonna start off uh, trying to get it at 1 125th of a second. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Shepherd to C4 code, something like that. Let's see, yeah. Turning up to 1 125th. And we'll see where we are now, just. We're at 12. Let's see here. 12. That gives us. We're almost uh, directly on. And uh, these two are both uh, down as much as possible. Let's just have a, another look. Eleven. Yeah, I think that's basically we're on the money. So eleven, that basically becomes um, F four. So that will work for us quite nicely. Yes, I put down the shepherd. Take you on here. Make sure we don't entangle ourselves. Have a final little look at the magnifying loop. That's the face is completely in focus. Yes, let's see. I'm check with this. Yeah, and as always. Race, race in the mirror. And let's see. Three, two, one. There we go. There we go. We are at the fifth exposure and uh, we'll see. We have five more to go. So let's see what else we can use and take a photo of. So I'll see you in the next segment. Okay, so this time I've actually set myself up a bit of a challenge actually. Uh, I still have the uh, 150 millimeter f4, but uh, I've also raised these two a little bit and they are at a downwards angle because this is now what we're going to take a photo of. It's uh, my collection of uh, Nikon uh, 35 millimeter cameras. So it's the F501, the, the F801 and the EM. But the thing is, I want these to be so that we don't see so much shadow in this one. That's why I actually raised the two studio strobes and angled them downwards. That would be so that the shadow would actually fall down and be a little bit obscured by the cameras themselves. So that would mean that we would actually, you know, get a softer light and also be able to mask the shadow. So 
but I'm thinking a little bit about, I think we're gonna do two versions of this uh, picture actually. One with two silver umbrellas, which we have now, and one where that one is still as it is, and we change this one to a white shoot-through umbrella in order to get a softer light, because even though these will reflect light, they still give a fairly sharp, uh, hard light. So we're gonna do a little bit of a experiment now with two different versions. So, but, uh, and also, I don't want to have the soft focus or soft effect of the 150 millimeter f4 soft focus. And instead of putting in one of the discs, it actually says in the manual for that lens that uh, if you put it at f8, the softness will actually disappear. So that's a little bit of the, uh, <clears throat> the trick in this one, that we're gonna try to do this so we get about 1 30th of a second. So we're gonna put this at 1 30th of a second, or not 1 30th, 1 60th of a second, and we we'll try to get it to 16. So 16 it becomes f8 and that would eliminate mostly of the most of the soft focus effect. So uh, we'll see how that goes. So yeah, we'll take a look. So let's see, we'll take the PC port. And 16, we are on the money. So, yet again, we're just gonna put this PC port back on the camera. Put that, that down, go around, back, make sure we're not entangling ourselves. Have a final little check. Let's see, 1 60th, F8. Make a check with the preview lever, looks good. up and uh, three two one great and now we're gonna do another one where I'm just gonna change that one from a silver to a shoot through so uh, yeah one moment okay so now I have changed it up so I'll actually do a pan on it so as you can see here this one closest has a silver umbrella and the far one has a uh, shoot through white umbrella and uh, we still have the same setup uh, you have seen that uh, on the previous b-roll so we'll just take the shepherd and have a uh, look at seeing how this has uh, I'm still gonna use try to use f8 but now we need to have a look and see if uh, the change of the umbrella has also changed the f-stop that we're currently getting. So we'll have a look. So off, out comes the shepherd once again. And we'll take a look. 15. So we actually lost a little bit. So I'll just turn this up a little bit. And uh, we'll see what we get. There we go, and uh, just put you down, put back the, there we go, the flash cable, and uh, we're gonna take the next picture. So again, we haven't changed anything, except the umbrella. So up with the, the mirror, and uh, three, two, one. Good. 
There we go, we are now on the seventh exposure and we'll see what we're gonna do next. So, see you in the next segment. Okay, so now we are at uh, the, what is it, the seventh exposure and uh, this time we have something uh, that is a, has a little bit to do with the number seven in a way, but uh, I have now switched lenses again to the uh, 127th millimeter and I've put on the circular polarizer because this time we have some things that are in acrylic casings so if we would just use it as is with no you know uh, circular, po circular polarizer we would have the problem of a lot of reflection flash reflections in the acrylic but with the help of the circular polarizer I'm able to minimize that and uh, hopefully we're hopefully able now to not get so much uh, reflections in it and we're trying to get uh, 100, one 125th of a second at f5.6 so we're gonna use the shepherd now again and try to get a good light metering but keep in mind that this has a little bit to do with the number seven, so I'm not gonna show it to you now, but just, uh, yeah. It's a little bit of a nerdy surprise or whatever you wanna call it. But uh, anyway, here we go and see what, we're in, what we have. 16, so no, we need to, we need to really dial it down both here. I'm gonna put you on mirror mode. And where do I have that one? There we go. Three, two, one. Yes, and so we are now at the eighth exposure. So yes, uh, we'll see you in the next segment and see what we can do. Okay, this time we're gonna do a little bit of a photo, or rather a product shot of the Mamiya 645 Pro, uh, which I have here. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna take the, the uh, there we go. So I have the 645 here now, um, and I put a, a fair bit of distance between the background and, and the camera that I'm going to take a photo of, because <clears throat> I still have the 127 millimeter uh, prime on the RB67, but this time I want it to be at f3.8, which is the maximum aperture of uh, this lens, and the reason for that is because I want such a shallow depth of field so the camera is in focus, but the line, the black and white separating line at the very back of the, uh, uh, of, uh, the backdrop, I want that to be blurred. So that, that line with the contrast between black and white will be blurred and the camera would be uh, in sharp focus. And I would suspect that I can do that at f3.8. I've done that with, um, what do you call it, I have uh, checked with a preview and uh, that gives it so that the lettering, the Mamiya 645 and the Pro logo and so on are good, sharp in focus, but the backdrop is blurred. So that's a little bit what we are trying to achieve. So we want to get the Shepard uh, let's see, something like that. It doesn't have specifically written out 3.8 on it, but it has 2.8, so you know that it's a little bit north of that. So we need it to be about between 8 or 9. So we want a number up here of 8 or 9. So that's uh, what we're aiming for. And uh, I want also this to have soft, uh, 
soft shadows, so that's why we have taken up the shoot-through umbrellas once again. And uh, yeah, that's where we are at this, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So, yeah. Shut you off, and uh, let's see. I think that's as good as we are able to do it with this setup, and that's what I want. So there we go. So we're going to put you at. Uh, we're actually going to put it up to one two hundred and fiftieth of a second, and three point eight, which is basically very close to f four. So here we go. Have a final look to see that we are in focus and that what we want to be in the picture is in the picture. So up with the, the mirror and three, two, one. Here we go. So ninth frame. Uh, let's see what else we can take a, take a photo of. So see you in the next segment. Okay, so this is the ninth uh, picture, so it's the second to last one that we're gonna do on this roll since there's only 10 exposures uh, per roll, see if I can not tangle myself too much. And uh, on this one I have done a little bit of a, uh, what shall we say, a Andy Warhol-esque uh, setup. Let's see here now if I can put, take this on. So as you can see here it's uh, some Coca-Cola button. Okay, so this is, unfortunately, the Panasonic is out of battery, which was expected, but uh, anyway, I can uh, tell you a little bit. You're gonna see the picture result anyway. This is a little bit of a Andy Warhol-esque setup that I have here. It's a, a old Polaroid camera and a few bottles of Coca-Cola and a can of Campbell's uh, lobster soup. I didn't have the tom tomato soup, so this is what we're gonna do. And I think I want to do this at f5.6. And I only have one studio strobe for this one and I have the bond doors on it and no, I don't have any uh, grid on it. So it's just, this time I really want sharp uh, shadows. So really this is to be they're the one with very sharp shadows. So let's see what we get now. And we have it at uh, one 250th of a second. So we'll see what we can get from that. We actually get eight, which is right on actually. That would be, uh, that would be the best compromise then. So we are basically good to go right off the bat. So let's see and I'll just take this and put it on my shroud as such. Have a look to see that everything is in focus that we want to be in focus. And uh, let's see, we'll put you on your up mode. up and three two one done so yeah now we have our final exposure and I think I'm gonna do that one uh, the same as this one but the difference is we're gonna put on the 
circular polarizer. So there we go, and uh, this is the last one I'm gonna do. There we go. And uh, just do it now. Three, three, two, one. There we go, and three, two, one, and. There we go, and that was the last frame of this roll of film, so just gonna do like so, and uh, put in the dark slide, and I'm just going to take this roll down into the laundry room and develop, man, uh, develop it. And in the next video, we'll have a look at the images. So this is Tobias Bergstrom from TB Photo X 1.5 to FX, and I'd like to see you guys in the next video. So take care from now on. Bye.